Hi, I'm Nick Schimmick, Pioneer Field Agronomist in Northeast Wisconsin. Right now in the growing season, what's going on is that we have our, our tassels being fully emerged. We have our silks starting to fully emerge from the husk, and so we're having pollination occur throughout much of the much of the area. So this is a really exciting time of the growing season because we've we've got our ear ear size already been determined, and now we're trying to determine how many harvestable kernels that we can have on that ear. Um, however, there can be stresses that impact what our final yield is still going to be all the way through our grain fill period. So what I'll briefly do is just go over what are these different kind of types of stresses, um, when can they impact our yield, and um, what are some ways that maybe we can try and still protect our, protect our yield all the way through grain fill. So really there's going to be three different things that we're looking at um, at this point in time. One is successful pollination um, or lack of successful pollination. Two is kernel abortion. And three is starch accumulation and how that can impact test weight. So really, at, at, like I mentioned, our, our size of our ear has already been determined. So through our vegetative stages, we got ear girth and ear length um, that's already been set. And so now at pollination, what we're looking at is how many of those kernels can be pollinated and make those into harvestable, harvestable kernels. And so we're really, really when we're looking at success for pollination, um, we're looking at making sure that, that that tassel and those silks are emerged at the same time, synchrony between those two. Um, if we have our, our pollen shedding occurring before our silks emerge and not allowing them to pollinate, then we can have issues with pollination. So really a couple things that can, ha that can impact a successful pollination are drought stress, heat stress, or, or, or insects um, causing silk clippings, such as from corn rootworm beetles or Japanese beetles, clipping those silks back so they can't receive those pollen grains. Really well, one I want to focus on is drought stress. Um, heat stress can occur as well, but here in northern Wisconsin, maybe we don't see that quite as much. Um, heat stress, what that does is it reduces pollen viability, can reduce pollen shed or cause some silk desiccation. And that really doesn't occur until we get upwards of 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, some of those temperatures we're really not, really not seeing through our, grain, or through our pollination period right now. Um, right now in northeast Wisconsin, we're about 80 to 85 degrees as a, as a high for our temperatures over the next few weeks. Um, so really we're, we're looking to be in a good spot for temperature-wise going through pollination. However, drought stress or, or moisture stress can be more concerning. Reason being is that these silks have a high demand for, um, demand for water. So they're going to start emerging from the base first, elongating from the base first, and the last silks that are going to elongate and emerge are going to be from the tip. So depending on that ear, of course, there's going to be about 1,000 silks that need to emerge. If we have any drought stress, any moisture stress, those silks, um, the silk growth is going to be reduced or stopped. Um, typically, they can grow an inch to two inches a day. However, by reducing those, the, the growth of those, those silks, um, we may get some asynchrony between that pollen shed and between that silk emergence. So ideally, um, drought stress, reducing the amount of drought stress um, or having a sufficient moisture can really help us, first and foremost, be able to improve the success of our pollination. If we've had successful pollination, what can happen next, though, is we can get those kernels to abort. So this can happen between the stages of R1 all the way up through R3, which is when we get to milk stage. Um, so we may have successful pollination. Those silks have emerged. Um, each silk is connected to an ovule, which then creates a potential kernel. Um, that's happened all the way up to the tip. However, if we have any type of stress, moisture stress, um, drought stress, nutrient stress, all that can impact how well um, those carbohydrates and those resources are going into those potential kernels, and they're going to start to abort. So typically that's going to occur from the tip of the ear first and start working its way down. So this is when we start seeing that tip back, which then, of course, is going to affect how many harvestable kernels we're going to have in that field. So um, so this can happen, like I mentioned, all the way through R3. Um, once we hit R3, end of R3, going from R4 to R5, the dough stage, all the way through the dense stage, up until we hit black layer, um, we can be impacted by how much starch is accumulated within that plant. Um, of course, if we have reduced starch accumulation, that's going to impact what our test weight is. So some things that can impact our starch accumulation is going to be our, our still our drought and moisture stress, um, lack of sunlight or solar radiation, not allowing as much photosynthesis to occur, um, reducing the amount of carbohydrates that are created and being able to be put into those kernels. And of course, if we have any nutrient stress as well, to be able to supply the energy and supply the nutrients needed to uh, demanded by that plant to be able to put on kernels. So after, of course, we go through R5, we hit R6, which is black layer. The maximum amount of dry weight has, has been accumulated. Um, we can't impact yield anymore at that point in time. So at this point in time, we, we're going through the grain fill period. Um, just, maybe just starting to get there. What are some things that we can do to be able to help protect that plant or maybe help give that a better chance going through the grain fill period? Well, 
Um, a lot of that's our, our nutrient management, of course. Um, a lot of that's already been done prior to tassels. So nit um, some nutrients that are still highly demanded through grain fill are, are, are nitrogen or phosphorus or sulfur. So being able to make sure that there's an adequate supply of that for our, our yield potential out there prior to our vegetative stage. Um, also, keeping those upper leaves healthy. So uh, we can only do so much with our environment in terms of moisture, of course, and how much heat we're getting. But keeping those leaves, leaves healthy from disease and disease-free, um, especially our ear leaf and the upper leaf canopy that contributes the most to our photosynthesis, most that contributes the most of the energy. Um, keeping those healthy through the grain fill period will help that keep that plant photosynthesizing. Um, more potential to be able to create energy and be able to create carbohydrates and be able to put starch within those kernels. If you have any questions, please reach out to your nearest Pioneer sales professional. Good luck the rest of this growing season. And if you have any other interest or any other, any other topics you want to look into, I encourage you to follow Pioneer Agronomy on YouTube. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.